You are welcome once again to this uh, Monday Business Mentorship. I'm so delighted to have again this opportunity of coming your way and uh, making available information that I believe you have been waiting for for a very long time. And from the communications that we're receiving from most of you, we have just realized the importance of such a very unique program. And we are also thinking of uh, making it more available to you, even on different platforms and just on our Facebook. But I thought I would exhaust the first question you sent, which was the major question of the many questions that you asked, which was on vision. And I thought I was going to exhaust that during our first session, which was last week. But I realized there was more to be covered. And I believe uh, today I will again attempt to uh, shed more light on that same question. Vision. 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 The last time we dealt with two major scriptures, the other one written by Solomon, where he talked about how people would perish if they are in a place where there is no vision. And also from the book of Habakkuk chapter number two, where God had spoken to his prophet, the visionary, about writing the vision and making it plain. So basically those were the two areas that we touched on last time. And let's see if we can take that a little bit further and try to investigate until we bring you to a place where it will be easy for you to access visions. Visions that are within you and some few visions that are without you. So I want to look again into the manual, like I said last time, the word of God is our manual. The word of God is the script. The word of God is the book. We go by the book. We do business by the book. We live by the word. And having God as our manufacturer, making such a book available, we ought to make a good use of that book. Otherwise, we are bound to either abuse or misuse ourselves as the product that the manufacturer produced. We have to handle ourselves according to the book. That is the script. So visions. What is my vision? What is my vision? You know, sometimes when people are asking about their purposes, what they're asking about is their vision. Some, when they ask concerning their careers, what they're asking about is their vision. They really want to understand what is my vision. Now, Visions are very, very complex in the way that God has designed them. Like I've said before, visions can exist 
even without the visionary coming to have a view of them. You can have a vision without a visionary, but you can't have a visionary without the vision. Visions are already in existence. God have created pictures and images. And what you need to do now is to have access. Knowing how to have access into those visions, which is very important. Now let's look at something here today. Uh, there is a man in the book, the Bible, which you and I know is the word of God by the name Abraham. Abraham was given a name by God and God said to him, I will make your name great. Which means that the name wasn't that great before God called him. His name later became great after having obeyed certain given instructions. Come out of your place. Come out of your people. Go to the land which I will tell you. Then he said, God, he attached a benefit to that obedience. Then I will make your name great. So movement was required first before his name could be elevated. Why I'm, I'm touching on that? It is because last time we dealt with you being in a place where there is no vision. And Solomon said that the people perish. Not everyone else, but the people within such a place where there is no vision, they perish. Perishing there means dying. You die. Lack of vision in a place kills the inhabitants of that place. You are killed by lack of vision. So there is a moment in your life where you have to migrate, move away from such a place or you create the vision for that particular place just so that you and your children can stay alive in such a place. And I said something very profound as well, that it, it, it requires you to have your own personal vision, which helps you to assess the availability of the vision of the place. How can I tell that I'm in a place where there is no vision if I don't have a vision? It calls for a vision for you to see another vision. It calls for a vision for you to appreciate another vision. It also calls for a vision for you to interpret another vision. There is no way you can tell there is no vision in this place unless you are using another personal vision to visualize the place, to look at the place, to analyze the place. You need to walk into a territory already with your own personal vision, which helps you appreciate the vision of the place, the vision of the company before you can stay there. So Abraham was called out by God. 
because there was something terrible about the place where he was previously. The place had the ability to cause his name to perish. Hence God wanted him out of such a place. Come out and I will make your name great. Your vision must never be all about making your company big, making your brand big. You have to focus on having your name elevated. That must become your vision. If you didn't have that vision, I believe you're receiving it right now. You have to make your name a vision. The vision that you start working on. And that is going to require you moving away from certain people. Now again, after he had left the place, in chapter number 13 of the book of Genesis, then the word of God declares that it came to pass after Lot had separated with Abraham, that God said unto Abraham, I want you to look. Look to the north, look to the east, west, and south. As far as your eyes can see, I will give all that land to you and to your descendants. But notice, God is moving Abraham into another dimension of visions. But there was need first for a separation to take place. This is happening after Abraham and Lot had separated. So I wanted to take note of that very critical point, that there are certain visions that are only birthed by separation. Why is separation very important in that passage of scripture? Because of the meaning of the name Lot. Lot, you know, was a name. He was Abraham's nephew. But the meaning of that name is very important in as far as access to visions is concerned. Lot means covering. Lot means a veil. Lot also means a blockage. Now, when Abraham was separated from Lot, it means a veil was taken off his face. How come God had to wait for one individual to depart before he could give him access to broader visions? This is very critical. It means that you have to identify the people that have covered your vision, covered your eyes. And unless there is a separation between you and such individuals and a separation between you and such an organization, then your vision can never go beyond where you are. God will wait until there is a separation. Then a certain dimension of visions can be birthed. Who is that Lord in your life? Make that your first vision. Identifying those who are blocking your vision. Who is your Lord? Who is that person with that, that when he's around you, you lose inspiration. Who is that person that takes away your encouragement? And who is that person that when you call, 
five minutes with him on the phone, you feel like you can take over the world. Who is that one? You have motivators. You have people who are discouraging you. And sometimes these are not just people. These are places as well. But a certain level of vision is only attainable when you have allowed yourself to be separated from certain people. And that's a price that you need to pay. You have to let go of certain lots in your life that have covered you, people that have confined you to one place. Now Abraham is able to see. Abraham, being as old as he was, how far could he see? The vision that the Bible is talking about there is more than what the eye can see. It's more than that. Because as far as you can see sometimes, physically, beyond three miles, depending on what stands in your path of sight, in your line of vision, you can go beyond that. You have to keep on going higher and higher for you to extend and to lengthen your area of sight. But if Abraham was to be given only the place which his optical eyes could see, then that was going to be a very small piece of land. That wasn't going to be much. But there are two, I believe, two organs that God has made available to you, which is responsible for delivering visions unto you. Your eyes and your mind. You see visions through your eyes and then the visions that you see are handed over to your mind for processing and understanding. It is your mind that gives meaning to what you see physically. Now, I want you to understand what is happening because now that you have two things, two parts, two vital organs of your body that can give you access to visions, you then must understand and know how to make good use of those two gifts that God has given to you. It's not just your eye that has a vision. It is your mind. It is your mind. But then, I want to help you understand how that place can be located within your mind where visions are contained. When God created your head, when he created the skull, that was a place where he believed that most things would originate from. God had faith in that place called your mind. There are pictures of the mind, images of the mind that you need to take advantage of. You see, when you were in your mother's womb, you had your eyes, but you could not see anything. It was dark. In fact, your vision there was darkness. But for you then to be able to see and to appreciate nature, 
there was need for separation to take place which you now call birth that birth was separation between you and your mother and you were birthed into another dimension of visions now it wasn't just darkness that you were seeing you could now begin to see things around you things that you couldn't have seen had you remained attached to your mother separation is very important i will keep on repeating that because some of you you need to understand that unless you are separated you will never get to see what god wants you to see so you have your eyes and you have your mind both your eye and your mind have the ability given to them by god to see and to perceive you notice that a blind person uses a stick because his eyes cannot see so when he walks across the street and he hits the bumper of a truck parked somewhere along the street and then he stretches forth his hand and he touches the vehicle immediately what comes into his mind it is not a giraffe it is not an ostrich it is a truck a vehicle that picture is so vivid in his mind yet it never went through his eyes i'm saying this so that you can understand that there are already visions stored within your mind because some of you may pray may wait until you see it through your optical eyes you are waiting for that moment where you can visualize it with your physical eyes and unless that happens you don't believe that you have seen a vision because you only want to access visions that are coming to you through your eyes yet god has stored information visions pictures in your mind this man has never seen a vehicle before but the first time he touched it that information was handed over to the mind now vehicles are in his mind money is in his mind success is in his mind though you've never seen it but now he has it so you need to have access into your mind and extract visions from your mind now your mind is that receiver you know when you receive a call on your phone there is a transmitter in your phone in your cell phone that is responsible for receiving and sending out information when a call is coming into your phone it's not every part of your phone that is responsible for receiving that call it's not the screen it is not the cover of your phone it is not the color there is a receiver there is an antenna within that phone that receives information and gives it to the rest of the body When you pick your remote control and then you press the volume button Now there is a line of light an infrared light that is that is emitted from the remote that goes straight to the television and within the television there is a component that is responsible for receiving that light It's not the entire television 
It is not the stand upon which the television is on. There is a part. And I'm talking about that part within you, the brain, that God communicates with. That when visions are emitted from sometimes a dimension that you know nothing about, the part of you that captures that is your mind. It comes and it drops in like an idea. And then the rest of the body can benefit. So that part has to be treated very, very well. It has to be kept very intact. Otherwise you stop receiving. So I'm not saying you have to receive the vision now by use of your brain. I'm telling you that you have already received a vision. It is already stored in your mind. What is left is for the entire body to access that vision. But separation was needed. Separation is very necessary. Now, there was a moment as well in chapter number 15 of the book of Genesis where God the Bible declares that he brought out Abraham and asked him to look up. He said, look up and see if you can number the stars. But before he could look up, he had to be brought out. He brought him out first. Out of what? Out of a tent. That's a covering. Stars that he could not have seen while he's still within the tent. God had to bring him out first for him to access another dimension of visions. God did not say to Abraham, look up. He brought him out first and he made him to look up. Things that you can never see as long as you are under. Be very careful. Your place could be the only limitation that you have right now. And unless you are willing to walk out of that confinement, out of your lot, then you are probably never going to number the stars. He looked up and he could see stars and God said, can you number these? He said, I can't. These shall become your generations, your children. But there is a movement first. There is a movement first. So I want you to understand this now. And also in the book of Judges, there was a time when God had appointed a man by the name Samson to bring deliverance to God's people. In fact, his vision was to initiate the process of deliverance to God's people. He was sent by God to start the process. Though he failed to accomplish it, but he managed to study it because that was his vision. But this man in chapter number 16, you will notice that uh, a woman by the name Delilah was hired by the Philistines. They said, find out for us. Where does his power come from? This man is too powerful. We can't capture him. We can't arrest him. We can't restrict him. He goes wherever he wishes. Where is his power coming from? And they promised 
to give to this woman a thousand two hundred shekels each just so that she can go and investigate and find out where the power in this man was coming from. She went and she was successful. You know this story. But I wanted to notice when they finally captured Samson. His hair was cut off. The seven dreadlocks that he had were removed. And he woke up when he was told that the Philistines have come. He thought it was just like any other day. And the Bible says that he didn't know that the Lord had departed from him. The departure of those seven locks was the departure of the Lord. Something on his head, something attached to his mind. When that was removed, what he lost was the God of Israel. He departed from him. And the first thing they did upon arriving was to, to remove his eyes. They took off his eyes. Vision. 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 Now they led him to Gaza. They kept him for some time. And there was a day the Bible declares that and then his hair began to grow. One day as they were marrying and they were rejoicing, celebrating, thanking their God, Dagon, for delivering into their hands this very notorious guy. Now the lords of Dagon were also present in that auditorium. And Samson was invited to just come and dance before them. Whilst he was there, they did not realize that the hair was growing. In fact, they didn't care about the growth of the hair. Because to them, power without vision is nothing. So then Samson needed them to destroy the Philistines. There were over 3,000 Philistines sitting just on the balcony. Just the balcony. Then he asked a young boy who was there to lead him. He said, can you please take me to the main pillars of this structure? Because he realized that power was coming back. And he knew it was possible for God to restore back to him his power. And he knew something was going to happen. Then this young boy took him to the columns, the major pillars of the building. He said, I just want to rest. When he got to those two columns, one on his right and the other on his left, then he asked the Lord, for one more chance, God, if you can restore my strength one more time. Notice, he said, so that I can avenge the Philistines of my eyes. I want to revenge Help me destroy them. For one reason, I have lost my vision. It wasn't strength. It wasn't power. That wasn't the reason why he wanted them destroyed. Loss of vision. Can you imagine? He's believing God for more power. He's not even attempting to ask God for the vision. That makes visions very, very critical. 
But also I want you to understand. He had the power. The hair was growing. But he did not have the vision. Hence he needed this very small boy to lead him. So no matter how powerful you are, even as a nation, as long as you don't have a vision, little boys will lead you. Little boys will lead you. Power is not enough. What gives the power you have direction is the vision. Because he didn't have the vision. All he had was the power. He had to be aided by a small boy. Visions, have you noticed? But until today, with all the technology available, it is still impossible for doctors to transplant the eye. They can give you a new heart, kidneys, liver, even bones. Skin can be grafted, but not with the eye. Till today, all the learned people they cannot pick an eye from another person and put it on you. That eye is never going to work. When you hear of an eye transplant, all they are transplanting is a cornea, not the eye. Which makes God the only sole provider of visions. Only God can provide you with visions. You can't fabricate it. You can't fake it. You can't get your vision from a university. Only God has to give it to you. No professor, no learned person can create a vision for you. You can only get it from your creator. So I want you to understand this very important aspect. Without vision, though with all the power, you are not going anywhere. You need to acquire a vision. Not just from God. Because sometimes it might have already come from God. It is already within you. Access that vision. Let the whole body benefit from the vision that has been received. By the antenna called the mind. We are lacking vision in most places. And you have seen this happening. Maybe in your country. African countries are giants. Very powerful. But do they have a vision? Do they have a vision? We are sending our children to school, equipping them, and God is making all knowledge and understanding available. He's making it available. Everything needed for the best leadership. Our children are busy acquiring that, believing that in the future, we shall have better leadership. But by the time they arrive, the nation would have gone. What has happened? If they come with all their expertise, with all their, the brightness of their visions, and then they will realize that there is no more any nation left. Everything has been sold. The nation has been mortgaged. Where are they going to start from? This is going to be the most terrible thing that they will have to face during their lifetime. And they will realize that 
all our predecessors had was political power. But they had no psychological vision. And all that our children will have is a motorcade. Everything that makes a nation a nation has been sold by men of power. There was a generation before them whose focus was just power. And nothing much was done focus on visions. I want you to look at this very, very carefully. We have all the power necessary, but do we have the vision that can take our nations forward? Vision is very important. Though Samson had his power restored, you can lose your power today. You can regain it tomorrow. But can you lose your vision and have it again. Be very careful. You have to preserve your vision more than you can even preserve your power. Because this is something that can never be restored. Africa has to wake up. Look at what you have done to yourself. You have gone out to ask for assistance from little boys. You are bigger than them. Yet you have all the power, what you don't have, that has made you to be led and yet God made you the leader, is that you have lost vision. You have to watch, look at this very, very carefully. What is it that you want? Is it not a vision that you have lost? It's not political power. It is a vision. So if you begin to consider these things that I'm telling you now, you will understand that unless your vision is restored, then there is no hope for you. Right now we have an issue in all most of the African countries we are crying over sanctions. Now the biggest sanction that we really want removed is that part that allows us to go out there and borrow. That's what we are screaming for. We are, we are crying for that opportunity to go out and borrow. And what we are going out to borrow is not money. It is the fiat currency. And these people, because they are now smarter than us, they come in here, they come into your country, and they get your real money and they give you papers. Why? All that you have is power and no vision. Where there is no vision, then the people perish. Now, as a business person, you need to begin to focus on accessing the visions that God has made available in your mind and let your entire body begin to benefit from that. There is nothing else that is ever going to stop you as long as you have a vision and you are willing to write the vision down and you make it plain. By making the vision plain, it is not so that only you can understand but it is so that even the people around you can understand. Once the vision is received, then the vision ought to be written. How? Plain. Why plain? So that both you and the reader can understand. And after the reader has read the vision, now he can begin to run. You want your company to run. Write the vision. Make it plain. 
and have the company come walking. And after reading the vision, the company will begin to run. I want you to understand this now. Do everything that you can to meditate until you penetrate into your mind and extract images that God has stored within you concerning your success. Until then, stay blessed.